So I've been teaching in different art environments since the 1980s. Uh, and the reason I've kept it up across different countries and so many different kind of groups in the community um, is I find when you work in isolation as an artist, which suits me very well, I like working in my studio and, and having a great deal of mental space to work alone, but it needs to be challenged. And I've found um, demonstrations very important. So, you know, it's, it creates trust. Um, we work together in the room. If I'm working as well, I'm putting myself on the line as well um, and showing that, yeah, you, you can do it. And I tell you, after 50 years out practice or you know, 30 years out practice, um, and I know this from friends who are performing actors, that you, you do something publicly and you do it with an audience, then there is a definite trust relationship and risk element in that. Students do that every time they come in, so they're being brave. Um, so I like to reciprocate, so I try and bring a demo here and there uh, into work and also respect their space. So, you know, if they, some students don't want me to touch their work, others like me to demonstrate and do something onto their canvas or paper. Um, I always ask for an invitation um, and respect that space uh, because when you're makers, you're artists. You know, when you're in that process, you're an artist. And uh, it's, people, you know, people, I know our friends in their 70s who've had extraordinary careers in the performing arts, who still get stage fright when they go in front of a, a camera or an audience. Uh, and uh, I think there's a little bit of that in the visual arts as well, because we're so used to working alone. And once maybe every year or two, if we're lucky, we get an exhibition. Um, and otherwise, you know, we don't have to face that as often. But when you teach and when you're in the classroom, um, and when you come in as a student with other students, you do that every time. And it's a bit, it takes a bit of braveness, it takes a bit of courage. Um, so I like to sort of um, try and respect that in the students. But also working a little socially, it helps us deal with what should always be part of uh, good art practice, which is the frustration and the ups and downs. Because if you're not challenging yourself in every work, um, I don't think you're getting the most you can out of it. So doing that with other people, learning from other people and seeing different ways of approaching your work uh, is a really positive thing and I think that's one of the um, great bonuses and um, great goals that we should have working in community art schools and um, the class environment. As the Dutch would say, gezellig, it's a home-like and communal space which feels shared and the students can feel like they own it. Um, it's a place where you can play freely so you're not worried about uh, spilling media and, and services. It's very well set up uh, as an environment with a, a variety of light spaces to work freely in a lot of different art media um, and it's well organised and administrated and has a really helpful, happy team um, I've taught in so many different places. This is a very peaceful and enjoyable place with a strong sense of um, collegiality and community uh, and a nice kitchen and good facilities and uh, it's possible, my personal, um, possible to have decent occupational health and safety standards which is something I haven't always had in my workplace <laughs> and I've been, always had a bit of an obsession with uh, using art materials well, using them in a healthy way um, and having the space to work and to be able to enjoy and focus on your work and experiment. So I've had a lot. I've moved house roughly every 18 months, um, over 20 times in 21 years. Um, huge number of house moves and temporary places and stuff in storage or locked up and including my whole studio, my art supplies and my work. I've had work destroyed by shipping or um, water and termites and yeah, lots of blocks that were physical and external and imposed and then sometimes creative blocks when there's things going on with me or in my life um, which uh, get in the way. Uh, but it's what I discovered um, is it doesn't matter. Don't worry about overcoming creative blocks, it will change. Everything changes and everything moves forward, even um, if you don't make any effort to push it. In fact, the more you just let it happen, the more likely you are to move on faster. Um, if you really want to go and have an art practice, as I do, so most days of the week, uh, somewhere five to seven days a week, I'm in the studio. Uh, if I'm not working on something, I will prime, I will sand, I will stretch, I will prepare, I will scrape back my palettes and I will read and I will listen and all that's 
a very solid part of studio practice too. So you don't have to be sort of pumping out work. You know, in fact, it's much more sustainable if you never pump out work, but you just work reflectively and have a considered studio practice, which has balance. And that balance is very important. So it's not really in your control, so let go, it's okay. And uh, if you want to just make something without the stress of um, the idea that you're in a creative block and you're not doing the thing you plan to do, that's fine because art is all about accidents and you can just do something, um, do something really fun and silly to challenge your creative block. You know, like literally go on YouTube and look at Bob Ross and paint some happy little trees and some happy little clouds. And if anything puts you back on track, that'll be it. <laughs>